Now, what if the velocity did not have that staircase behavior? If it was actually a smooth function of time, which will be the case in a realistic situation. So, what, how can we how can we proceed given a velocity like that? So, a possibility is to divide the time interval into slices and to approximate the velocity function by a constant line with a constant velocity over each one of the intervals and the value of the velocity that we're going to choose we're going to have to choose it wisely so that the area they, that it, we're shading here with with pink lines so that that area corresponds to the area under the actual velocity curve in that interval which is what I'm shading with uh, yellow lines here if those two areas uh, coincide which is the same as to say that the blue shaded triangles have equal areas then uh, choosing the velocities in each interval in this particular way will give us the following position versus time function I'm going to show you the approximate the function the position versus time that corresponds to the approximate velocity function which is a staircase function and the actual position versus time function so as since we have chosen uh, the velocity in each interval in a specific way that I described then the approximate function and the actual function they actually coincide at, at certain points and you can see therefore that the approximate function is a pretty good match for the actual function so if you are interested in finding the amount of distance traveled by the object by the actual object described by the white line uh, in a certain interval of time between TI and TF the one thing that you could do is if you have two uh, segments uh, within that interval then you would add the displacement in the first interval plus the uh, actually the second interval here the displacement in, during the second interval plus the displacement during the third interval and that will give you the total displacement between TI and TF now calculating the displacement uh, over the second interval and the third interval you would use the approximate function that way the, that displacement over the second interval is simply given by the velocity in that interval multiplied by the length of the interval if we are saying here that the total time interval between TI and TF is delta T then the time interval the length of the time interval that we're using is delta T divided by 2 since we chose two intervals within that uh, between TI and TF the important thing here is that this would work provided that we choose the velocity in each interval in such a way that it satisfies the condition that the area under the uh, constant velocity curve uh, matches the area under the actual velocity versus time curve so is there any other way to uh, figure out the displacement of a particle that has a particular velocity as a function of time without having to uh, find these uh, velocities and, and satisfy this condition that the area matches and so on which seems a little bit complicated um, is there any other way to do it? what we're trying to accomplish here is to figure out uh, how much distance is traveled by the object between the time ti and the time tf so the way that I propose to do it is we're going to approximate again the velocity function as a staircase function but we're not going to uh, require any condition on the velocity we're going to a particular condition what we're going to do is we're going to say that the velocity in each interval that we're going to choose is basically the velocity in the middle of the interval so if we do that then the change in position, the displacement of the object between TI and TF is going to be approximately given by the area under the approximate plot uh, which is the sum of the areas of each one of the segments of the slices in which we cut that interval how many slices do we cut the integral? we, we, uh, we can leave that as a variable n and the interval of the length 
time interval of each slice is going to be, we're going to choose it as being the total time interval delta t divided by the number of slices that we're using. It is easy to believe that as the number n increases, the precision of this procedure would increase. And in fact, it would turn, it would become exact when the number n goes to infinity. We will be able to calculate the displacement of the object if we take a large enough number of slices. We will get the uh, displacement of the object to any precision that we want. So we can write that delta x is exactly equal to the limit when n goes to infinity of the sum of the displacement over each time interval. The displacement over each time interval is vi times delta t n. This expression, the limit when n goes to infinity of that summation, is what is called an integral. It's a definite integral between ti and tf of the function v of t. That interval, as we have seen, we can see from the plot that it corresponds to the area under the velocity versus time plot between ti and tf. Now we want to here do a comparison between position and velocity and velocity and acceleration. What we figure out is that if we have the velocity as a function of time, the connection with the displacement is through the area. The area under the velocity versus time curve between ti and tf is the displacement of the object, how much distance the object has traveled between ti and tf. This is coming from the fact that the velocity is the derivative of the position. Now for the case of acceleration, if we have a plot of acceleration versus time, because the acceleration is connected to the velocity through the equation acceleration equals dv dt, then what is true for the position with respect to the velocity would also be true for the velocity with respect to the acceleration. That means that if the area under the velo velocity plot gives you the displacement, the change in position, then the area under the acceleration plot will give you the change in velocity over that interval of time. Everything that we've done so far uh, to uh, figure out that connection for the case of position and velocity, we can repeat the same argument for velocity as a function of, of the acceleration, taking the information of the acceleration and deducing the information about the velocity of the object. The area under the curve, of course, we can mathematically express as the integral between ti and tf of the velocity with respect to time. And the, for the case of the acceleration, the integral, of course, is the area under the uh, acceleration versus time plot between Ti and Tf.